Ryan, before we get to the locksmith, let's get to some serious business. In two weeks, the Kelsey Bowl. Who's gonna yeah. win? And what are what is your feeling right now? Because you are a diehard fan. I'm a diehard fan. Um, I you know, the, the Super Bowl is a hard one to call sometimes because it really does end up being, and especially this year, the two best teams. Super Bowls have their fluky moments, you know, that you can't really account for or predict. I honestly I do believe the Eagles can win primarily because of our defensive line and our offensive line. Um, that D line for the Eagles, you saw what they did to the Niners. We took out two quarterbacks. Like it's just uh, they're Hassan Reddick and the D line are out of control. Um, but the other thing is us, we have a soft spot for Andy Reed too, because he was our coach for 14 years, but he won once and, 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 uh, you know, yeah, I'm excited, man. It's it's crazy. This scene, this season came out of nowhere. And Nobody expected us to have this record. Oh, Jalen has been amazing this year. And very quickly, I remember I got into football about 25 years ago. Okay, and and uh, my coworker over at E, he said the best fans are, are Eagles fans. And I go, why? And he goes, dude, we boot Santa Claus. So yeah. what was it like? What's it like been for you, just your life, just being in that community? You know. It's so it's so passionate and it's such a, a, a family in, in so many ways. When you go to like an Eagles game at the stadium and people tailgate the way they do back in college, like, you know, they'll start in the morning and make breakfast and be out there all day. And um, it's just, uh, you know, it's a blue collar city. A lot of people from around that area, that's their upbringing and that's their mentality. And it's very kind of uh, scrappy and and people just love their sports, man. Like I, I go to sporting events in a lot of locations that I'm working, whether it's, you know, obviously I go, go, go to Laker games here and there or Rams or it's just different, man. It's there's no uh, in, environment like a Philly sports event. You know, I really love how unique the locksmith was because I'm a huge fan of these type of genre films. Can you speak to that? Was that a big attraction for you? The fact that without giving too much away, the narrative goes in different places and it's not your A to B revenge crime thriller. Yeah, I, to me, it felt a, a kind of like a throwback to like a, a 70s movie in some ways, like like the kind of thing that Steve McQueen would have done or, you know, we talked about the James Caan movie Thief as, a, as inspiration at some point. And um, I like that, you know, Nick is French, his background, he's an American guy, but he's, his mother's French. And so he loves the whole film noir thing and, you know, uh, the, the sort of heightened aesthetic elements that go along with that of like, you know, when I come in and I find April and she's smoking and you see her from the back in the cigarette and still kind of leaning into some of the pulpy kind of like thriller aspects of it. But at its heart, you know, it's a guy looking for redemption trying to right the wrongs of his past, uh, start a relationship with his daughter after being in prison for 10 years. Um, you know, and, and I, and I like that aspect too. I think it's, you know, you, you root for those characters, even when they're making questionable choices, you, you still root for them to, to figure it out. Ryan, is there a charge that you get as a, as an artist working on indie driven projects? Last several years, I've seen a lot of your work and it's not under the umbrella of a big studio. You're pretty much, you're, you're under the gun. You have a certain budget, but within that world, within that sphere, you can have a lot of creativity within the storytelling. Has that been a great um, energetic force for you on a creative level, just starring in these type of films? Yeah. I mean, you know, the way that the, the film industry has changed as a whole has meant that a lot of those small films that used to exist in the you know 40 to 25 million dollar budget zone it's really now for film production it's either you're at the one end of the very big budget you know marvel and tentpole movies or it's independent film for the most part now um and those films get acquisitioned by companies and then they claim them as their own but a lot of times to tell an, a, a, a good story that's not obvious, you're going to have to go the independent route. The studios don't seem to have the same interest in making those anymore. Um, and the other thing is I'm enjoying, you know, the, the locksmith I'm very much the lead of, uh, but the last couple of years I've enjoyed playing supporting roles in a couple of independent films, you know, where it allows me to, you know, do a little bit of preps, come in for, 
a week or two, do some, a couple of really fun scenes and then move on to something else where it's almost like doing, you know, television or, you know, an arc on a TV series where the com commitment isn't as drastic, um, which at my age is, is something that you factor in now. I, I've done this for 30 years and, you know, where I'm going to be and for how long matters to me now. <laughs> I, I don't know how do you how you can balance those sixteen weeks. Uh, I, I I don't have a life. I'm I'm a Texans fan, so I I just <laughs> I put my life on hold during football season. So kudos to you for actually balancing a career during football season. But I have a question for my podcast co-host for you, and uh, it's a two part question. He was gonna he's asking you is quote the longest distance between two points. Do you know what that is? Well, it's a straight line. Yeah, the longest distance between two points is a kidnapper and his money. And he wanted to ask you, what's it like after all these years to see the way oh, of the gun? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, the way of the gun. The <laughs> yeah, way my of bad. The gun, right? <laughs> yeah. Way, yeah. Way, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, what is it like? Just a lot of people really consider it as one of their favorite films. It's gained popularity over the last 20 plus years. Is that yeah. a good feeling with movies like that yeah, and McGruber yeah. and just, you know, so. I love it, man. Sometimes having films that like develop a later audience or a cult following are more rewarding because they'll last uh, longer. Um, and people and people discover them over, you know, I, there's still people that'll discover stuff that I've done years after it's out. And it, it is kind of fun that way. Um, I love Way of the Gun. It's one of my favorite things I've done. We, we sometimes kick around the idea of doing a sequel um you know chris mcquarrie who now does all like mission impossible and every you know all the tom cruise movies he would like to revisit the world because he feels like he screwed it up and i you know uh but um i yeah it was i i, I love it man I, same thing with mcgruber like and those types of movies end up having such dedicated fans you know the people that know every every line of dialogue and you know, there's like drinking games built around MacGruber and um, yeah, it's fun to have those. And then I've got the couple ones, like I know what you did last summer that comes out every, you know, every October, there's people watching that and posting that. And um, it's, it's, I guess that's what you hoped as a young actor is like, you would have things that lasted that stood the test of time that people still went back to. And Ryan, a, a couple yeah. more questions on that train of thought. Can you name just from your extensive body of work right off the top of your head, can you name um, a movie you would love cinephiles to see from your resume that you feel is either underappreciated or underrated and, and you personally love? Interesting. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I, you know, there's a few that I really, I, 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 I think the movie I did with Chris Cooper called breach is a really good one. It's a true story about, uh, the arrest and capture of, of Robert Hansen, the worst spy in U.S. history. And um, I think that's a pretty quality film. I really love Flags of Our Fathers with, that I did with Clint Eastwood because it was a World War II movie and I have a lot of family that served. Um, so things, you know, things have different meanings for different reasons, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, there are a few that I feel like people haven't seen that I kind of, like, but I also think, you know, the locksmith is one of those. It's like, it's kind of like a, it's a nice story. And it's like one of those, it's, it feels like a throwback. There's something comforting about it, I think, in a weird way. And final question, I, I, I've i seen in interviews that you've mentioned Cool Hand Luke as a film influence, but mm -hmm. can you name right off the top of your head one of your all-time favorite movies? And what is it about this specific film that still resonates with you as a as a movie buff? Yeah, a Cool Hand Luke was definitely one of the reasons I became an actor, for sure. Um, I was just inspired by it. that performance and that story and everything. Um, beyond that, I got really into, um, you know, Scorsese and I got really into Coppola and like, you know, it, that, you know as I was a younger, younger person, like that's kind of what I would get inspired by. And then working with Altman and, and I'm a big Altman fan um, was, was a really special thing for me as well. Um, but I think back on movies like Raging Bull and Dog Day Afternoon, um, you know, were some of the kind of movies that I was really, um, you know, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. 
And before so. before we go, after you guys win the Kelsey Bowl, what about the Sixers? The Sixers gonna get the championship, or is it gonna be my Clippers? I'm, I've been depressed since '84. Who's who's gonna? Yeah, take- I mean, <laughs> look, we've we won in '83, so it's been a long time for us too. If I don't know, man, if the Eagles were to win the Super Bowl and the Sixers got the chip, I might take a break from being from sports. I might like what can be better than that? I would just be. But who knows? It's like, you know, there's a lot of basketball left. But you guys with uh, D'Amico Ryans, man, I'm a huge fan of his. Yes. I think that's a great hire. Great I'm not going to off the record. I might have uh, I might have teared up a little bit when with the hire because it's, it's, it's amazing. It's exciting. Yeah, I'm glad he's back there. Yeah. Ryan, thank you so much for your time. Really enjoyed your film. Got it. Thank you. Right. Take care, man. This is Cinematics.